All right, welcome everyone. So I am here with Crypto News Alerts and we are going to talk about the post-election bullish price action that's going on and how crypto has reacted to the news of Mr. Donald Trump being the 47th elected US President of the United States. How are you, my friend? Gary Gensler, you're fired. Now go <laughs> home and get your shine box. So exciting to see the correlation of the crypto market with the Trump pump. I called it. I called the Trump victory and I believe that we'd hit a new all-time high. Lo and behold, I did a 15-hour pump watch from last night till today. We hit the all-time high. We're currently in price discovery, 75.5. Congratulations, everyone. Well done. Yeah. Regardless of anyone's take on politics, it's hard to deny that crypto is benefiting from this outcome. So we're going to talk about exactly what the ramifications are, uh, both immediate and what the mid and long-term future look like. And uh, try to answer as many questions as we can from a data perspective. So you guys have an idea of what's what's around the corner. Sounds good, brother. And yes, as I was watching the polls, I had the polls up live and in the flesh for the election. And I had the Bitcoin chart. And as Trump kept getting more and more of a decisive lead, for example, on the largest prediction market of poly market, the Bitcoin price was 100% correlated. It was pumping and it got to the point we can just watch the Bitcoin chart and determine how well Trump was doing. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, I noticed that poly market was going, it was really zigzagging in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, when it became clear that he had an advantage in the swing states, uh, that's when I just saw the bets go from like 60 40 to like 90 10 in favor of Trump. Yeah, and it ended the highest I saw it was like 97 to 3 percent uh, right before they announced the victory, of course. But a lot of people bet a lot of money, uh, won a lot, but obviously Trump was the favorite. So you would have won more if mm -hmm. the other lady would have won. Yeah, there's, I think, uh, Look on Chain put out a post about a, an individual who bet $5 million on poly market for uh, Kamala Harris to win, and that did not work out in their favor. So, um, you know, just remember this is, even though Trump won and it looks like the popular vote is something like 55 45, there's a lot of people who lost a lot of money on this move. So it's, it's not all. It's not all cheers universally going on right now. And uh, regardless of, of your take on the market, whoever is watching this, just remember this is still a zero sum game at the end of the day. Exactly, brother. So what we're looking at right now is just the, the seven day changes. You can obviously get an idea that Bitcoin is, is doing better than most. There's still plenty of altcoins that are down over the weekly perspective. But if we change this to a one day perspective here. Yeah, it's just a sea of green with especially assets like Uniswap absolutely taking off. I saw that it was spiking like crazy just as it became clear that Trump was likely to be elected last night. Um, Dogecoin is making a little run currently, but it's actually not showing up as anything special compared to anything else. Ave is and having it. A, it mm -hmm. Did those just flip XRP during the pump? I don't know if it's still above, but they were neck and neck at around like 20 billion or something like that. So I think Doge was up almost 30% yeah. last night. That's a great question. Elon's doing. This data might be just slightly delayed, but it's still showing that XRP is at about 30.44 billion versus Doge at about 28.51 billion. So they've flipped oh, right before, on. but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Doge really begins to take off with a lot of, Bitcoin profit money going into speculative assets and meme coins, you know, it could very well happen in the next couple of days. But yeah, Uniswap, we've got Aave here, Injective having a great 24 hours, Thorchain and Athena among some of the most notable altcoins that are seeing just massive ascensions at the moment. But uh, the moral of the story is in everything your, is up. In your opinion, Brian, if the woman would have won, who is obviously an anti-stance on crypto, do you think all the alts would be pumping the way they are? Do you think it would have been the same outcome or do you think it's more bullish with that Trump decisive win we got last night? Yeah, I think it's undoubtable that the markets were hoping for and planning to inject more money in with a Donald Trump result. Um, whether the long-term impact is what everyone expects 
remains to be seen. And that's where, you know, we would need a, a political expert who really can decipher all of the policies that Trump plans to enact, how many of them will actually be executed. Uh, and I, I would I would say that there's always a possibility that this is a speculative pump where it's kind of a buy the rumor, sell the news situation. Uh, and it's kind of, you think about the ETFs back in January, 10 months ago, there was an initial jump for the first 12 to 24 hours, followed by an actual surprising dump. And then everyone said, oh, I guess the ETFs weren't as big of a deal as we thought. And then after the, the FOMOers jumped out, thing, feeling like they got bamboozled, then Bitcoin went on an epic tear uh, on, en route to an all-time high in March, two months later. So I'm not going to go as far as to say this is like a fool's gold pump and now all of a sudden we're going to see a retrace. Um, but yes, the the reaction of the markets, both in crypto and the S&P, which we'll get to in a moment, seems to be directly related to the favored candidate uh, winning, especially with the whales and the billionaires out there who are very largely in control of these markets, you know, they, they were worried about capital gains taxes going way up. Uh, if Kamala was elected, she, she straight up said that that would be something she would change. So now the billionaires can breathe easy and they're probably injecting money back into all markets with confidence. Great points. I agree. I think the risk on assets are going to be more bullish with Trump in office, obviously. Um, businessman, lower taxes, the opposing party was trying to more than double capital gains tax from 20 to 45% and impose a new unrealized gains tax, which would have been a nightmare for investors in general. Yeah, well said. And I'm, I'm just pulling up the chart of Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump mentions uh, as of now. And it's interesting, we're actually seeing a little more Kamala discussion. I'm not positive on why when I zoomed in, it should look more. Yeah, this is this is more accurate. But you can see how Trump really spiked after the Kamala hype happened. It's kind of a distinct difference if you see here. And to me, it's just going to, we can even get it more granular and say like, um, Donald and Trump. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Donald or Trump, excuse me, and then relate that to crypto. So then we are filtering out everything else that might have nothing to do with the markets. And I'll do the same for Kamala. So we have them as a direct comparison. And this will give us a better look at how things are shaping up in terms of the crypto world. Oh, left out of parentheses. There we go. So that looks, that makes a lot more sense. You can see Kamala just not being mentioned nearly as much as Donald Trump, especially once it was clear that Trump was going to be winning this election. Um, his, his mentions just went through the roof and you can see how that correlated with the pumps. So I would imagine that his name is going to directly correlate with crypto's fluctuations for at least the next couple of days. And then we'll start to see the true amp impact of uh, him being elected as the next president. Pretty epic. Good data there, brother. Thank you. Yeah. And of course, we we need to remind that he doesn't actually go into office for a couple months, right? There is still a Democrat uh, as the current residing president right now. So we will see how the next couple months go. And then January is when you know, he re-enters office for the first time in four years. Yeah, I think it's going to give us a 60 to 90 day window to position yourselves, fam. I think things are really going to take off in Q1 of 2025, in my opinion. Where are you, I, I certainly can buy into that theory, but what, what do you think most likely would contribute to that? I think him actually being in office, uh, a lot of the promises he made, uh, starting with stockpiling Bitcoin for the United States, um, adopting as a Treasury Reserve asset, as Cynthia Lummis proposed at the conference, and uh, not selling any Bitcoin, but holding it strategically and making the United States 
a Bitcoin mining hub for the entire world. On top of that, getting rid of the bad regulators, such as Gary Gensler firing him, freeing Ross Albrick, who is the founder of the Silk Road, and just doing things in favor of Bitcoiners. I think um, that is extremely bullish. I think it's going to attract a lot more of the whales to invest their money in crypto, knowing there's some level of certainty here. Um, and I think maybe we'll have a pro-crypto regulatory environment uh, moving into 2025. Good yeah, night, that's, Gary. that's fascinating. I, I appreciate the comprehensive analysis on that. And uh, in theory, it makes a lot of sense. I threw in Gary Gensler in relation to crypto topics, and we can see that he definitely is starting to gain a lot of discussions uh, as Trump was elected, especially this morning, actually, just in the past few hours. So people in crypto are very much aware of him uh, going out the uh, nearest exit when Trump gets elect uh, officially put in office in two months. Yeah, the crypto broskies are already celebrating Gary leaving office. And did you see this morning, within 20 minutes of the market opening, BlackRock did over a billion dollars in their ETF product, unprecedented levels. I think the institutional FOMO mm -hmm. is going to really kick in. Yeah, they're definitely in the news right now, and people are excited about it. I, I know MicroStrategy announced uh, a multi-billion dollar plan to invest more into crypto, so they're going to be a big topic as well. Let me put them on the same, I'll put in their ticker too. So if we put That's them right. on the same chart. MicroStrategy announced the $42 billion Bitcoin buy over the course of the next three years, which is virtually 20 to $30 million worth of Bitcoin being bought up practically every day. Insanity. And it's yeah. a beautiful thing. And there's also rumors of Microsoft shareholders voting big this week on whether to adopt Bitcoin or not. And the two primary shareholders of Microsoft are Vanguard and BlackRock. BlackRock yep. has their hands in everything. That's a great point. Yeah, Microsoft wanted to make something like 1% of their entire portfolio related to Bitcoin investments, if I'm not mistaken. So it's pretty massive what's going on right now. And uh, it's no surprise to see the price action doing what it is with all of these positive stories, in theory, coming out. So besides that, um, you know, I wanted to touch on the fact that the price of Bitcoin is very much being correlated with the S&P. So this isn't just an exclusive crypto run right now. We're seeing investors really opening their wallets in equities right now as well with the same explanation, I think, that's going on, which is the fact that they're not going to worry about higher capital gains taxes. And when capital gains stay low, uh, billionaires and millionaires and everyone in between can invest in confidence with, uh, without more burden uh, standing in their way should they make a profit on their investments. So it makes a lot of sense. This, again, is kind of an initial reaction, and we're going to see just how much FOMO takes over over the next couple of days. Uh, and I have this other chart here that we talked about right before we started this call that illustrates the amount of positive versus negative comments going on across social media. We look at Twitter slash X, Reddit, Telegram, uh, 4chan, and Bitcoin talk when it comes to our algorithm to look at whether every comment is likely to be bullish or bearish or neutral. And this shows that we're seeing about 3.2% positive comments for every one negative comment. As you can see, that's much, much higher than what we typically see. And <clears throat> it's one of the highest spikes we've seen over a one day stretch in the past three years. So this is obviously massive and uh, it's reflective of a lot of celebrations going on right now. I dig it. So ultimately three to one in the bull's favor on social media. Yeah. Besides X, what's the next biggest social media platform where crypto is discussed? It's I'm close. Curious. I would probably favor Reddit just slightly over Telegram. Wow. Uh, good to note. I've never used Reddit. So it's like I'm late to that party. I need to get on it. Yeah. R slash cryptocurrency. They talk about it a little bit in uh, R slash Wall Street bets, which you may have heard of, but yeah, there's always a lot of discussion on and speculation about future price movement there that can really be reflective of 
you know, when FOMO and FUD is really starting to get out of control. But in short, this chart, you may think it's good initially, but we actually want to see it settling down. If FOMO gets too high, you can see how it tends to correlate with tops because it means there's a lot of people buying in right now at 75K or beyond 75K, assuming we're going straight to 80. And yeah, that could still happen. But when there are a lot of retail traders jumping in and buying after a 10% run, uh, it usually corresponds with a bit of a cool down period as whales can just easily take profit from all of this retail money coming in and then buy back uh, after the retail traders get spooked. So we'd like to see this settle down. If I zoom in a little more to like a two hour period, and we do this just to look at kind of the last month or so. Yeah, we see that this positive spike happened right as Trump was getting elected and it's calmed down a little bit since. It's down to like 2.4 to one. So maybe if we get below something like right here, two to one, that's generally a sign that there's enough healthy bullish and bearish sentiment you know, battling one another and we can grow further. So that's kind of what we should be rooting for right now in the immediate future. Nice. And of course, Bitcoin's being discussed at about just under 30% of all uh, asset discussions right now, indicating there's just a huge focus on Bitcoin's all-time high right now, which is a good thing. It means, you know, the meme coin hype and stuff is at least kind of being tempered right now while people are focused on how high Bitcoin can go. Very nice. All eyes on the Bitcoin. Definitely. And of course, another thing on Bitcoin is just how much the average profit is right now. So traders over the past 30 days, they're up about 12% uh, on average. Generally, this is always going to hover around 0%. The best times to buy are actually when we're seeing you know, negative numbers for the 30-day and this 365-day MVRV line. So again, it doesn't mean we can't climb higher, but you can see historically, once these MVRVs get to around here, that tends to be when we're getting a little bit dicey and a little bit high. So again, this is more on the short-term end, and we might see a correction or a cool-off period for a few days or a week, but ultimately, with all of the long-term uh, stories that seem to be benefiting crypto with Trump's policies, you know, being perceived as very bullish and uh, BlackRock and, and MicroStrategy sprinkling in some good news. I can see realistically, you know, a very minor top happen soon, followed by a more long-term and sustained bull rally, assuming, you know, the crowd doesn't get too hyped and there's not overwhelming amounts of FOMO that may limit the, the rally. And you notice there's just a big grin in my face. I just, we're in price discovery. We're about to tap 76 G's, so I can't contain myself. <laughs> yeah, it's continuing to climb as we have this call. So it's very exciting to see. Um, and then whales. I, I know we have a mutual interest about what the huge money, uh, spenders are doing in crypto and right now they're continuing wow. to accumulate so this bright green line represents the 10 or more btc wallets and how much they specifically are holding so we're talking about anyone who holds seven hundred fifty thousand dollars or more so we're including sharks in that uh number of course it, it just gives us a better spread of large capital holders but if you look at wow. those 750K plus dollar holders, they're just continuing to go up, especially beginning right around three-ish weeks ago. Since October 13th, they've accumulated, it appears, 25,413 more Bitcoin. So Wow. What was significant October 13th? Was that around the time Elon was strongly pushing Trump or did a big event occur? I'm just trying to... It's a good question. I'd, I'd love to do more research on what happened right at this point, but it does appear that they just started taking off right at this time. And, and price 
was down at that time for what it's worth. So Wales may have simply found it to be an opportune time to buy while Bitcoin was stuck at about 62K that day. So since wow. that time, it's gone from 62K to 75. And yeah, that's a, about a plus 20% increase in the past three and a half weeks or so. Wow. And I think the smart money tells the tale of the tape. That's where all the smart money going into Bitcoin. Yeah. They are bullish. Clearly, the charts don't lie. Yeah, they historically get it right, for sure. Uh, if if the whales and the sharks are continuing to accumulate more and more, it's rare for prices to suddenly fall off a cliff. Uh, it usually is doing the opposite and slowly climbing or even having a rapid pump like we're seeing uh, post-election. So the only thing I'd and like I, to see... No, go ahead. Uh, I say I like to believe that being the whales are the smart money, they also have the understanding of the cycle and where we are. And post-election, typically, uh, where we go in price action, we never return to pre-election prices. And we just had the halving, you're the halving, Q4 always bullish. And the following year, we typically hit the cycle peak. So I think people are preparing to position themselves for that ride over the next maybe 12 months or however long this bull lasts and some people think the bull is just going to continue uh and surpass 2025 history hasn't shown us that but a lot of people are saying the landscape's completely different this time yeah that's a really great point i i can absolutely foresee that playing out um and you know on the backs of these these smart money whales and sharks uh we we could very well see some prices that people were only imagining uh only six months ago so I was going to say the only concern I have on this chart is the dry powder is going down. So it's pretty clear that these whales are swapping this, the Bitcoin line, for Tether, which is going down. Uh, specifically, we like to look at $100,000 to $10 million wallets. They tend to be the active wallets of these whales and sharks in this tier. And they've actually dropped pretty significantly, which makes sense because they're swapping for Bitcoin. But over the past two and a half weeks since October 22nd, these wallets have gone down about, about 5% and USDC about 2.5%. So ultimately, we'd love to see more fiat coming in right from the bank accounts rather than the dry powder, powder starting to be expended in order to buy more Bitcoin, because eventually anyone's going to run out of, of stable coins and we're going to need to get Bitcoin buys coming from elsewhere, uh, mainly fiat. Do you think that will mostly be driven by the retail or continuance of the institutions bringing in the fresh yep. capital? And I'm kind it's of shocked with how much uh, BlackRock and the uh, institutions are accumulating that they're not bringing in mass amounts of cash yeah, to be right. fair, I mean, BlackRock and MicroStrategy, they're going to be the exceptions because whatever stablecoin wallets they hold, they hold way more than $10 million in stablecoins. They're more in the billions. So this is looking kind of at the smart money tiers where most of them, most of those whales and sharks are holding stablecoins. But those outliers that are just massive and making news headlines, they're going to be in like the billions that kind of overlap with exchange wallets and we avoid using exchange wallet uh, tiers because it, it gets, they almost go the opposite direction because exchange wallets are going uh, up a lot in stable coins as people are looking to buy. Um, and it's beyond what the smart money, most smart money wallets are holding. But if we want to look at exchange wallets, they look a lot better. You see, especially USDC. So this is probably Coinbase mostly. <clears throat> There's now $3.73 billion of USDC on exchanges, uh, whereas Tether is also going up. They're at $25.35 billion, way more than USDC. If I put a shared access wow. on, you can see that. But wow. both are climbing. So clearly people are moving more and more stable coins to exchanges, waiting for that perfect price point for them to jump in and buy more. So that's a good sign. Um, I would just love to see that this is going up along with the smart money stablecoin wallets. So I still think this is painting a very good picture. It's just not um, 
you know, like a, a 10 out of 10 picture, which would lead us to believe that we're about to shoot to the moon right away, if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Appreciate the explanation. How are we doing with the Bitcoin supply left on the exchanges? Are we still at like a five year low? Um, very minimal Bitcoin to go around right yep. now, right? Yeah, it's still low. We saw a little bit. So a little bit of an uptick in the beginning portions of November, but it actually has gone back down a little in the past 24 hours, maybe due to people uh, being pretty confident that Trump was about to be elected. This was at close yesterday. So right as the election results were starting to come in. But overall, I mean, if we go back five years, like you said, we'll just do 2018, five and a half years is fine. You can see how the supply and exchanges has just dropped significantly. Um, right around Black Thursday is when, when it was at its highest. Makes sense. People were panicking. Uh, it was at 17.5% then, and now only 9% is on exchange. Uh, yeah, on exchanges. Wow. So quite That's a all. difference there. And we're pretty much at the lowest point since November of 2018. So exciting stuff there. I'd say that's a pretty good sign. Absolutely. I just look at all these institutions getting a piece of the pie, nation state adoption, sovereign wealth fund. We now have states, Florida, bullish on Bitcoin. We got, you know, Wyoming. So many states adopting Bitcoin, so many countries to be adopting Bitcoin. Um, so much capital in the world. I think a lot of it's going to start really flowing into the crypto market, which is still a nascent, very early market. I mean, what's two and a half trillion dollars? It's nothing on the grand scheme of how much money is floating out there. I've heard speculation north, 700 trillion, 9 trillion, quadrillion, whatever those numbers are, a lot of money is going to be flowing into the apex predator over the course of this next cycle leading into the next halving. So I'm very bullish if you couldn't tell. Yeah. No, great points. I love to hear all perspectives. We tend tend to take more of a neutral stance here at Santiment and uh, just kind of follow what the data is doing. But objectively, with the news being what it is, uh, it seems to be that sentiment is rightfully quite high uh, for now. We're again, you know, we have to see how the first few months in office plays out for Trump. Uh, regardless of people's confidence in that, we have to let it happen first so that this doesn't turn into a buy the rumor, sell the news situation. But, um, you know, I'm really excited to hear your perspective. And uh, it seems as though you and your community and many people on X who know what they're talking about uh, find this result to be a very bullish outcome. So we'll continue to kind of monitor how the whales are behaving and sentiment and is driving markets. And, and that's going to tell the tale. Here's another perspective. MicroStrategy alone pledged to purchase more than the daily mine Bitcoin supply, and that's just one company. Wow. How many Bitcoins are currently minted each day? Is it like 450 or something like that? Something around that, yeah. On average, they're going to be buying more than that minted supply every single day for the next three years. One company. What happens when Microsoft and we add in the institutions, the Black Rocks, the Fidelities, uh, and all the other adoption. Uh, and then that's not even considering retail, which the last bull cycle, which took us to 69, was purely driven off retail. We had no institutions. So this is the cycle of the institutions. And I think we're going to really get a supply shock, if not in Q4, sending us to six figures. I think it's destiny in 2025. I can't predict exactly when we hit that cycle peak, but uh, I haven't been more bullish then now this is really the time we've been waiting for. Great points. Yeah, really awesome perspective. And I can't wait to see how this plays out. And, uh, you know, maybe we get on a follow up call and revisit this before the end of the year and, you know, see, see how sentiment has kind of shifted as we get to the final few weeks of uh, Biden's presidency and uh, things begin to turn over. So I'm excited. Is, is, is he still like the president? They I say so. Paper, but is he? They they uh, say he's still there, and uh, Kamala's still the vice president. So, you know, we we see how things turn over, and of course, there's so many people watching this video who are not even from the U.S., but we're still, you know, wise enough to be vested in this because of its importance for crypto. It's undisputed that the U.S. seems to have the most sway on where crypto goes next. 
Um, maybe China would be a secondary source as well. But uh, yeah, this is this is objectively a pretty big sign for crypto. And um, for the next two months, we still have a, a different party running the show. So we'll see. Sounds good, brother. And I'm honored to be out here with you guys and uh, looking forward to the next time. Well, let's definitely do it in about a month or so in December uh, at the height of Q4. We'll see how we're doing. Sounds perfect, my friend. Thanks for joining today. And thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to check out Crypto News Alerts and uh, you know we'll be following the content you guys put out as well. Much appreciated, Brian. I'll see you around. Take care, brother.